Hello, Environmental Policy 2 students. It's Dr. Conway back for week five, which uh, incidentally is your, um, your first uh, short paper week. So don't forget to get an early start on that and uh, focus a lot on, on uh, good writing skills. Uh, so in other words, point, point form everything out that you want to talk about. Structure them into proper sections and paragraphs and then write them out in clear, short sentences one top one one idea per sentence one topic per paragraph uh, keep your paragraphs and sentences short uh, guide your reader with appropriate subheadings uh, as you go through but before you start writing bullet everything out so that you know what you want to cover off in your in your paper okay this week is about prominent workplace environmental safety practices of course there are uh, that seems like a weird topic or a strange topic for environmental policy people, but the overlap between occupational health and safety and environmental health and safety is significant. There are many areas where the two come together, whether those be um, air quality issues, particulates, uh, smog, uh, contaminants in the air, or emissions into water that can impact not only um, um, the environment, but the workers that are working in the plant and the surrounding community. Um, so the overlap between occupational and uh, environmental health and safety is, is significant. While environmental safety experts don't deal with things like railing, railing heights and wearing your helmets and your goggles and your safety boots and your anti-flammable clothing and so on, we do deal with um, major occupational health issues that overlap heavily with environmental health and safety issues. The most prominent area of that, of course, is, is in the area of chemicals. And in chemicals, we have a, a, um, a number of different uh, risks that can occur in the workplace, which also then overlap and, and uh, impact the broader environment, including the surrounding environment, or for that matter, the global environment, depending upon what the, the pollutant is. Now, with respect to chemical safety, most workplaces in one way or another will deal with chemicals. Chemicals are virtually throughout our economy, as we know. And because many of those chemicals are hazardous and toxic, they need to be transported, stored, and handled in a, in a manner that's appropriate to their degree of risk. Um, the workplace um, hazardous management information system that Canada developed was designed to provide labels, clearly understood labels, for workers and consumers to see what the chemical is and how best to handle it. Now, in the recent period, we've had the globally harmonized system of classification and labeling uh, come up, which is a broad international system, very much like WEMIS. In fact, Canada was a leader in developing the globally harmonized system. Um, now, Canada is bringing WEMIS into line with the globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals. Um, which which includes uh, standardizing the symbols that we use, the, the brief descriptors we use on how to transport, store, and, and safely use these chemicals. But behind that system is a whole network of what we call safety data sheets, which are, which are more detailed information on the chemicals, things to watch out for, what to not to mix it with, what, you know, what to wear when using it, all kinds of detail, what its compositions are, and so on. Now, those safety data sheets travel with the chemicals. And because we're moving to a globally harmonized system, if we all adopt the same system, chemicals can, trans can go across borders with the same types of information, same types of controls attached. That's a huge benefit to developing countries because most of that information is exhaustive and expensive to generate. But that's been done by developed countries like Canada. Uh, and through the OECD, but now that all gets shared with developing countries to protect workers and to protect the environment in, in all countries that adopt the globally harmonized system. So the overlap is very pronounced in, in these classification systems between occupational health and safety and environmental health and safety. Environmental experts really push the globally harmonized system, but occupational experts also uh, are really concerned with that issue. So. There's a link in your lesson notes this week that uh, allows you to take a little course on globally harmonized system and WIMIS. If you don't, if that link is disconnected or whatever, you can just, just type into YouTube globally harmonized system of classification of chemicals and you would be able to, um, uh, there would be all kinds of videos on that. It's a very important system for environmental experts to understand, to study, to learn about, because no matter what workplace you're going to be going into, you're going to be encountering that system. Okay, 
So for today, for this week, I want you to get a, a grasp of you know where the overlap areas are between occupational health and safety and environmental health and safety. Understand those interconnections. And uh, all environmental experts that work in companies need to be aware of occupational health and safety guidelines, safety regulations, the Occupational Health and Safety Act, and so on. So that's on your reading list. Obviously, you don't need to read those in detail, but you need to be aware of them and broadly aware of what they contain. Okay? So on that note, I'll let you go, and we'll, we'll talk to you again for uh, less, the next lesson in week six. Okay? Bye-bye now.